Good morning. The present contribution focuses on a study of the manpower needed to build the imposing perimetral systems of northern Povali Bronzate fortified settlements compared with their demographic capacity. The aim of uh, this paper is to answer to these questions. Was the number of persons contained in the villages enough to build the perimetral system and to dig the channel structures? And uh, a shift of people from other communities was needed? And uh, how the resources were managed by the communities? So, Let's see uh, quickly an historical background. We are in the in uh, Bronze Age uh, in, the, in uh, the northern Italy and in, in the Po Valley. In the, between the Middle Bronze Age and the, the recent Bronze Age, the Terramare culture developed. Terramare culture is a, a system of uh, fortified settlements with an economy based on uh, agriculture and uh, uh, livestock with the complex uh, management of the farmland, with the construction of uh, field ditches and the channeling structure. So the research area is the northern, the northern population, so the northern sector of the Teramare uh, culture. In this work, uh, we'll see this, uh, uh, these topics. Uh, for first, we'll look at demography, so the calculation of people who could live in a fortified settlement, then manpower, so estimate manpower necessary to realize the perimeter and channel structures. Then we will see some case studies to discuss the relationship between demography and manpower, and we go through the conclusion. We we'll start with demography. For this work, a new method for calculating demography within a fortified settlement has been developed. We call it planimetric method because we use uh, large planimetries to calculate the relationships between living spaces and living spaces, so between houses and outdoors. Then there's an extension of the relationships between the living and not living spaces of the whole settlement, and we calculate the people number of the basing of the settlement living spaces. So there's the creation of people coefficient applicable to settlements that don't have planimetries. So let's see quickly the method. All the planimetries are uh, sufficiently large with the living spaces and the outdoors of the population settlements were collected. We take eight uh, samples. For each planimetry, the sum of the living areas that did the surface enclosed by the perimeter of the huts was calculated in relationships to the total area of the plan. Through proportion between the living areas, the total area of the plan, and the total area of the settlement, the living area of the settlement was calculated. Then, uh, the total number of individuals, individuals was calculated for each settlement considered. And we're considering, looking at the, uh, the bibliography, one man every 7.5 square meters. To obtain the total number of individuals, the living space of the settlement was divided by 7.5. Uh, so, here the um, the coefficients, individual character for the eight samples that we had seen before, and we calculated it by dividing the total number of individuals by the living surface. And so, from coefficients obtained for each site accompanied by large planimetry, calculated, we calculated a coefficient applicable to all 45 settlements of the plane. So, this is not a perfect method at all. There are negative aspects, there are also positive aspects. A positive aspect, for example, is that the total living surfaces are calculated from real living living surface. Yes, uh, we have a limited amount of planimetries used for to extrapolate valid coefficients. And extending the living space pattern straight from the planimetry to the whole settlement is a potential risk. So let's see the manpower. Uh, to calculate the manpower of, uh, of um, to build uh, ditches, ramparts, and channel structure, we have before to know the volume of these uh, structures. At the beginning, we used uh, the territory formula, but the territory formula needs three sections. And due to the lack of uh, documentation in archaeology, we have to simplify to simplify um, the um, 
the geometry of uh, the structures from irregular prism to regular prism. And so we use the section of regular solid formula to calculate the volume of uh, ditches, ramparts, and uh, also channeling structures. Then the next step is uh, we look to um, Galileo says about earth, fort earth fortification and the 19th century says about earthworks, um, about um, um, embankment earthworks, and then we look at the works of solid archaeologists. Uh, who works uh, in uh, uh, looking at the manpower and the workforce. And we estimate uh, two or three cubic meters of earth worked by a man per day, with an average of 2.5 cubic meters per day. Then uh, looking uh, at uh, an example to see how the method uh, works. Uh, so this is the, the set fortified settlement of Perdice di Podroipo in the North Abu Plain, it's a little settlement. And um, we know that uh, the sum of the earth worked to construct the inner ditch and the, the rampart is about 6,200 cubic meters. Then, knowing the operational chain of the excavation and the transport and building of the earth, the construction of the ramparts, we're looking at uh, these works, and knowing that men could uh, work at 2.5 uh, uh, cubic meters of earth uh, per day, we estimate uh, um, 13 average, 13,000 of other average working days. And then knowing the number of people of the village, number, oh, okay, we don't see it very well, but it is uh, three, 300. Um, and we use the, the method, the, the planimetric method that we see before, uh, we can estimate a working time of about 40, 45 days. So, uh, looking at the case studies, uh, we categorize uh, the fortified side by dimension. So we have uh, three categories. The small fortified side, uh, big, big from uh, uh, an alpha factor to uh, 2.5 hectares. And uh, from uh, for this, uh, um, these settlements, uh, we estimate uh, 13,000 uh, of working days. And uh, so 40, about 45 days for 300 people that is the capacity of this uh, settlement. In this case, uh, we think that uh, uh, there's maybe no need of extra manpower from outside of the settlement to construct ditches and the ramparts. Then looking at the medium, uh, the medium for the settlement, being from 2.6 hectares to 6.5 hectares. The example is uh, the fortified settlement of Le Monte di Soto near Padova. Um, for the fortification, um, about uh, 91,000, uh, um, we, we estimate 91,000 of working days, about 100, uh, 100 days for the people capacity of the settlement. In this case, uh, maybe there's need of, uh, um, of people from outside to construct the, um, the, the rampart and the ditches, maybe from near sides. So we, we see finally the large fortified settlement. And uh, uh, we see the example of Castello del Tartaro in the low length of, uh, of Verona. And the size of this settlement is uh, uh, 20, uh, 20 hectares with a people capacity of uh, 2,300 people. And uh, we we'll see the, um, the landscape of, uh, of uh, Castello del Tartaro. There is the huge, uh, the, the huge uh, um, fortification uh, with uh, uh, also uh, uh, the, the Tragnone deviation that is a, a channel constructed by people of uh, the, the settlement and also an, an, an embankment in the south uh, constructed to divide and uh, to protect the fields in the north from the wetlands in the south. So, to construct the mot, uh, uh, the earth excavated uh, is about uh, um, 196,000 of, of cubic meters. For the rampart, about uh, 33 cubic meters, a uh, thousand of cubic meters. 
for the division channel is a huge work. Uh, the artwork was at least uh, five. Uh, 517,000 of cubic meters. Then we have a, a, a other a, other a feature construct. We have the embankment about the 2,000 200 and the thousand of cubic meters. Then we have the coral and the field ditches constructed, but we can't quantify them because we don't have. Um, they are uh, only um, uh, look. They are funded by remote sensing, so there are no possibility to calculate manpower. So th this uh, were, um, um, airports are done in the second phase of Castello del Tartaro and uh, if we, we sum all the cubic meters work we have at least uh, uh, 736,000 of uh, cubic meters and uh, at least uh, one million and, uh, and half of working days with a people capacity of uh, 2,300 individuals. So, if all the people of Castel de Tartaro, this large settlement, had work without stopping, we estimate about two years of work. But this is impossible because the villa's life wouldn't stop and the workers needed to be fed. The estimate of food needed is about 1,300 tons of cereal. <laughs> So we have to imagine hundreds of people working for many years. Airports had to be done in a few times because the collapse of these structures were quite quick. Experimental archaeology demonstrated. And uh, could the only people of Castello del Tartaro maintain these structures? Maybe there's a mobility of people and for the resources from other settlements, and maybe not only from the nearest settlement. So looking at the conclusion, for the small fortified villages, Probably there's no need of extra manpower and resources. For the mediums, possible there's the need of uh, extra manpower, maybe from the near sites, and maybe also food resources. For the large and fortified villages, there's, I think there's a sure, for sure the need of extra manpower, and maybe food resources from near sites, from closer settlements, and maybe from people from other territories. We don't know how how um, was how uh, big was the influence of these large fortified sites. So uh, we see the mobility of people relationships with the needs of the large fortified villages. So there's a, for sure a large fortified <laughs> villages manage the people, the people of the nearest of the near sites of the closest settlements, and maybe. Maybe the, uh, the territory of influence was bigger than we think. Then, a surplus of food. Uh, to, there's need of a surplus of food to feed the manpower. We we'll see about 1,300 tons of cereals for the last settlement of Castello del Tartaro. This surplus was product by this last settlement, or the surplus was collected also from uh, the close communities. Thank you for your attention.